Hey guys, welcome back. So in this one, we're going to be talking about HTTP status codes and how we can set them up on our application. Now, first to understand what HTTP status codes are, it's basically a standard way for servers to communicate to the client of what happened on the server. Now, as much as we can be able to, on the server, let's say send back a message like, yeah, hey, something was created on the server, or hey, something was deleted, that is something that we humans can understand. But clients and servers communicate to each other by looking at which status codes the server returned. So for example, here I'm on Instagram.com and I've filtered all my requests to only return the XHR requests. So you can see here that the status for all these requests was 200, meaning that things were fine. Now we need to be able to tell which one to send back to the client depending on what exactly happened. So when I sign out, you can see that now we have some other status codes here. And this was, of course, issued on the Facebook server back to this client, so this client can know what to do. So this is the Twitter login page. Notice that when I enter a username that like, doesn't exist and I click next, they go ahead and send us a 400. Now, understanding this status code proper is very, is very important, just so we can understand how, what clients would expect and how they, they would interpret these errors. So you see that it's in red, and there's a reason for that. It's not because the developer coded it. It's because the Chrome client is built to interpret that as an error. So what I'm going to do is in our application, so I'm going to go here in our app. So just go to constants. So in constants, remember we set up this file here. And then I'm going to bring in these status codes here. So you can see that they all start with HTTP and then they code. Now these codes are the ones that the browser will interpret. And, that's, and they, they are the ones that we are setting to the values here. So in our applications, we are going to be using the status codes, this as a constant, and then it's going to be picking this by default. So these are the most common ones. Now you can differentiate when to use this or when to send this by looking at what you're doing. Now on a server, if something we want to send back to the client is something informational, so you want to use some of the status codes that start with one. If we want to notify that something was successful, we want to use ones that start with two. For example, here you can see that if it's just a, a mere okay, we just send a 200. If something was saved, we use a 201. So if there's nothing to send back to the client, we send a 204. And the client will perceive this as successes. So if you take a look at uh, the redirect one, the ones that start with the 300, so 300, so 301, 302, and the like, those ones will, will represent that there was a redirect on the server. It might be permanent. So be sure to take a look at the difference with the naming here. So we also have the client. So if the user, like, if there's like a validation error on the client, we would be using like a 400. If there's an issue on the server, let's say a server can't handle the load, we would be like sending back a 500. So that's our introduction to status codes. Now in the next one, we're going to start registering a user. So when a user has errors, we will come in here and we check if we want to send them like bad request. Or if the user, if we're able to save the user on the server, that one means that the resource was created, then we're going to be using like this. So by the end of the series, we will possibly have worked with most of this. So, so that's going to do it for now. If this one helped you, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe, and I will talk to you in the next video.